In this video, we're going to look at the behaviorist approaches in model building. Now, let's look at the theories in behaviorist approaches in model building. We have the state theories of behavioral change, personality theories, learning and behavior theory, model specification, social learning theory, social psychological theories, social cognitive theories, health belief model, social marketing, and theory of interpersonal behavior. Now let's take them one after the other. Let's look at the stage theory of behavioral change. The stage theory of behavioral change occur in stages or steps. And movement through these stages could be unitary, linear, or cyclical, involving a pattern, adduction, maintenance, relapse, and readduction over time. Now, in the state theory, let's see the stages that are involved in it. The first one is the pre-contemplation theory. At this stage, there is no intent or the part of the individual to change his or her behavior. This is the beginning in this, the foreseeable future. There is no change, there is no, it is not thinking of changing any behavior at this stage. It's just the stage at which the intent or the part of the behavior to change is still in conception. Then the second stage is the contemplation. At this stage, at this stage, the people of the person are aware that a problem exists. There is now awareness of an existing problem and seriously considering taking some action to address the problem. However, at this stage, they have not made a commitment to undertake any action. Now, let's look at the third one. The third stage is the preparation stage. It is involved both intention to change some behavior, usually minor and often meeting with limited uh, sources. At this stage, the individual is now ready to have a change of behavior. But however, the individual may meet with some limitation. Now, the fourth stage is the action. At the action stage, the individual or individuals actually modify their behavior experiences or environment in order to overcome their problem or to meet their goal. And the final stage, which is the fifth stage, is the maintenance stage. The maintenance stage is where the people work to prevent relapse and consolidate the gain attained in the action stage. Now, in these stages, these five stages that we have, I have just mentioned, it may not go flow uh, consistently in this form. Sometimes there might be a movement from stage one back to uh, from stage one to two and from stage two back to stage one. That could occur because sometimes you may have the pre-contemplation stage and you now come to the contemplation uh, stage. You have been thinking, are you okay now? You feel there is a need. You have an awareness that there is a problem that is in existence. But you could still come back again to start, okay, let me reflect back. And what has been happening here is that there are times this maintenance may not occur at the last. It may be coming in between one to four. So it is always very important for us to have a guide and work with what is uh, required. Now let's look at the personality theory. In the area of personality theory, the, the, the theory explains behavior largely in terms of stable traits or pattern of behavior, which are viewed as resistant to change. And also, uh, this, this kind of um, theory, they view behavior as a resistance to change. However, the classification of individuals and can, can be classified into five categories. There are individuals that could be classified as innovators. There are some individuals that are early adapters. There are some individuals that are early majority. And there are some individuals that are late majority, late adapters. Now, in this area, there are different ways people behave. We do not all behave the same way. So it is good for us to know the personality traits that people normally manifest and this will help in the planning stage. The next one that we need to look at is the learning behavior theory model specification. In this area, learning theories have demonstrated that behavior can be changed 
by providing appropriate reward, incentive, and or disincentive. In learning a behavior approaches, these rewards and incentives are typically incorporated into structured reinforcement, schedule, and the process of behavior change is often termed behavior modification. This theory believes that when you pass an individual through a learning process, a structured learning process, it could lead to a change in behavior. Now, again, we have the next one, which is the social learning theory. The social learning theory is similar to learning and behavior theories in that it focuses on specific measurable aspects of behavior. Learning theory, however, view behavior as being shaped primarily by events within the environment, whereas social learning theory view the individual as an active participant in his or her in his or her behavior, interpreting event and selecting causes of action based on past experiences. So in this regard, you see that whereby the learning theory, the learning theory views within, the, the learning theory uh, view behavior as being shaped primarily by events. Then the social is looking at what the individual has been able to take within the society. One important theory derived from the social learning theory, which has had a major impact on many current model of behavior change, is that of self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, as stated, self-efficacy expectation have to do with a personal belief. You, that is the personal, you have the belief of a person and in his or her ability to successfully execute the action necessary to meet specific situational demand. So when you're looking at the efficacy, uh, the, 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 the efficacy, self-efficacy theory expectancy, it, believes, it goes with what the person believes in and what is able to come up with, with that theory. Now, let's look at social psychological theories. Theories that fall into this pattern are concerned with understanding how events and experiences external to a person, that is, aspects of the social situation and psychological environment, influence his or her behavior. Emphasis is placed on aspects of social context in which behavior occurs, including social norms and expectations, cultural norms, social stereotypes, group dynamics, cohesion attitude, beliefs, a number of useful concepts have emerged from social psychological theory, including attribution, locus of control, and cognitive dis, uh, dissonance, to name a few. Now, let us look at um, the social cognitive theory. The social cognitive theories uh, combine aspects of social psychological theories with components of both social learning theory and cognitive behavior approaches. Social cognitive approaches emphasize the person's subjective perception and interpretation of a given situation or a set of events and argue that these need to be taken into account if we are to understand ad adequately both behavior and the process of behavioral chain. A number of social psychological concepts have been found to be consistently related to behavior change across a wide range of situations. Now let's look at uh, to the example. Let us assume uh, a peer group, school, family, and etc. could be a reality of the social reality of a group. Now expectation of significant or repeated Respected others can also have a strong influence on a person's uh, behavior. The seventh one we need to look at is the head behavior, head belief model. What does this model stand for? What is the focus of this model? The model explains head behavior in terms of individual decision making. The process that the likelihood of a person adopting a given head related behavior in a function is a function of that individual perception of a threat to their personal health. Now, what are these kind of health behavior that could be? Well, you might decide to have a walk, jogging, 
And in this case, it has to do with a person. A person will be more likely to adopt a given behavior, which will help to improve his or her head. To date, the head belief model has not received cons consistent or strong support in explaining behavior change. Whereas, when the concept of self-efficacy is added to the model, however, prediction of behavior increases. Because the self-efficacy will equally apply even in all models that will help you determine you are the one that is in control of what you need to do. Now, let's look at the social marketing model. This one is patterned, uh, is patterned in line with the normal marketing uh, model. And the concept of social marketing is based on the marketing principles and focuses on four key elements. These elements include one, development of a product, the promotion of the product, the place, and the price. This is what the marketing principle follows. You have to develop the product, you have to promote the product, advertise the product, place the product for reach of the, uh, the users, and the price that will be. So as such, this approach is not much a theory of behavior change, but a proposed framework which situates people as consumers who we potentially buy into a certain idea or argument, given the appropriate selling techniques are applied. It is then assumed that the buying in to the, that idea by individual will result in change to behavioral change. And this is what we experience often in the society. Let's look at the last part of this um, theory, and that is the theory of interpersonal behavior. Habit strength is another concept that has been found to be important in predicting or changing behavior. Habit is an important element of the theory of interpersonal behavior, which proposes that likelihood of engaging in a given behavior is a function of what? A function of the habit of performing the behavior, a function of the intention to perform the behavior, a function of condition which acts to facilitate or inhibit performance of the behavior. So in this regard, to date, this model has not been tested as extensively as have the theory of reasoning, uh, action, or the theory of planned behavior. However, this is why individual must first intend to participate in a given behavior or activity as the behavior or activity is repeated over many occasions, participation becomes habitual. That is what normally happens when you are dealing with that, that personal behavior. You start something at a time and you do it over time, it becomes part of you.